Here we have a partial biopsy of the gastroesophageal junction. In this part, we can see normal stratified squamous epithelium of the esophagus. And here we have a columnar type of epithelium together with intestinal metaplasia with goblet cells, uh, which together with endoscopic findings define Barrett's esophagus. So let's go a little bit closer. Here we have some chronic active inflammation in the lamina propria. Here we have multiple goblet cells. And let's have a look at this. Here we can see the atypical cells with enlarged nuclei with really prominent big nucleoli. These cells are not part of the superficial epithelium. They invade and inf infiltrate the lamina uh, propria mucosae. So this is already intramucosal carcinoma. And uh, <clears throat> let's have a look what we have here. This is the stratified squamous epithelium and underneath the epithelium we have adenocarcinoma undermining uh, the superficial epithelium. The glands are atypical, irregular. They are clearly invasive associated with desmoplastic reaction. Uh, which we can see around these invasive glands here. The nuclei are ir irregular, hyperchromatic. So this is at least intramucosal adenocarcinoma, or PT1A stage. And let's have a look at this. Here we have uh, some strands of the smooth muscle cells, which looks like uh, lamina muscularis mucosae and it probably really is part of the lamina muscularis mucosae so does it mean that if we can we can find the malignant structures underneath uh, these uh, smooth muscle cells that we are already in the submucosa well not really we need to be really careful about that because the lamina muscularis mucosae could be reduplicated and unless we can find uh, the infiltration of the submucosal large blood vessels or the submucosal glands, it's better not to overdiagnose uh, this as an infiltration of the submucosa. So this is the adenocarcinoma of the gastroesophageal junction, which is according to WHO criteria, uh, adenocarcinomas that cross uh, the gastroesophageal junction regardless of where the bulk of the tumor lies. So it could be in the esophagus or in the stomach, but it, if, if it affects gastroesophageal junction, it should be considered as a adenocarcinoma of the gastroesophageal uh, junction. Most of these adenocarcinomas arise in uh, the background of reflux esophagitis and follow Barrett's metaplasia dysplasia carcinoma sequence. So here we have part of the epithelium, which is clearly dysplastic. We can find the distortion of the architecture. The nuclei are enlarged, hyperchromatic. They are localized in the upper portion of the cells. So if you compare this dysplastic epithelium with this normal epithelium, where the nuclei are localized in the basal parts of the cells, uh, that's a clear difference. If we run immunohistochemistry for P53, we would probably see that all these dysplastic glands are strongly positive. The morphological borders between the categories indefinite for dysplasia, low-grade dysplasia, and high-grade dysplasia in Barrett's esophagus is uh, somewhat or are somewhat arbitrary, and I would rather not go to such a details in this video, well, maybe sometime later. All right, thanks for watching.